Shout out to all my Conscious History fans out there. It's your boy Ian, a.k.a. Serious Coyote, here today to talk about the best, yes I said the best, history podcast out today. And first of all, I am an avid listener of history podcasts. I listen to at least 10 or 15 different ones a month depending on their release schedule. And in the past, I've listened to over 40. And today, I have ranked the top five podcasts. And I feel like those top those five podcasters have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. So I'm judging these this list off of three main criteria. And the first one being the playfulness and the personality of the podcaster. Because I have a whole bookshelf of history books that are dope. I have a whole audible library of Audiobooks that are being read, but with by men or by women with beautiful voices. But history podcasts offer the opportunity for tangents for meta podcasting. By meta podcasting, it's much like meta fiction, where the author or the podcaster becomes self conscious of their own podcasting and can talk to you, the listener, in a way that someone who's writing a book can't because. Meta history doesn't, you know, I, I don't see that employed very much unless it's an inquiry based history kind of assessment or book, which are rare unless you're attending uh, school or university for history. So the playfulness and the personality of the author and the risks that they take going on tangents, having fun, telling jo- jokes, telling them you about their personal life, that stuff matters because. And, and more importantly, their fucking reactions to what is going on, because as well, I'll talk about on the way, you know, they're reading some of this stuff and they're going over some of this material and you can hear them getting emotional about it. You can hear them sighing and being like, oh man, but on a history audiobook or in a book, you can't tell what the author is really feeling because everything is so cut and dry. So boom, that's number one. Number two is the quality or the the quantity and the quality of topics that they cover so some people like we'll say dan carlin which we see here on the left he goes very slow it might be every two or three years that we get something and he does some sub podcasts but it's a very slow moving train and they're very high quality podcasts but there isn't that much quantity of podcasts so i am judging on both you know the quantity and the quality but there's people like mike duncan who release one every single week, which, or when he's in the flow, he's releasing one every single week in one of his seasons. So that is the second criteria. The third criteria is the qual, like the actual quality of the podcast, how it is presented, the way that it's gone about presenting, the microphone, the enunciations, the, the, if there's an accent, all of that stuff goes into that. And I would say that those are the top three criteria, the the personality of the podcaster, the quality or in quantity of when the podcast come out, and then the actual sound quality and the presentation quality, kind of the external factors. So number five on the list, everyone, we have this fun photo right here of Dan and Dan, which is Dan, uh, Daniele Bellelli and Dan Carlin, who both make this list. For making history fun and old media and old media obsolete, guilty of nuanced thinking and refusing to bow to dogma, reward of five five million. Does that say five million or two? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean that's what's going on here. Actually, though, is that these podcasters are making history fun again because history needs to be told this way, man. Like I have worked in public education long enough and seen how these goddamn teachers teach, and they are not. And, and it's always about putting a Band-Aid on what's going on because they're like, oh, we need to do inquiry-based learning because they have never learned to ask questions or write essays. So it's like this whole thing that they can't show up at history class and hear the stories and like – anyway, I, I don't need to go on a tangent. So number five on the list, everybody – is Mike Duncan with his Revolutions podcast and the History of Rome podcast. So the History of Rome podcast is hundreds of episodes, and that's what got Mike Duncan on the scene. And I think we can, yeah, the History of Rome podcast, everybody. And it's a, it's honestly a great show. It's honestly, if you need to learn about Rome, Dan Carlin has one called Death Rose of the Republic. But if you want to learn about Roman history, which I think is one of the most pivotal 
aspects of creating a historical consciousness, Mike Duncan is the place to go. And then he retired from this because, of course, he kind of got through all of Roman history and got to the Revolutions podcast, which was a beautiful idea. The idea of just covering revolutions, the Mexican Revolution, the Iranian Iranian Revolution, the uh, Haitian Revolution. I mean, I've listened to all of them. It's a great series. Mike's a great presenter. A couple things that why he hit number five on the list is he releases a lot of podcasts. So that's a good thing. He has a pretty nice personality. He has a nice voice and there's a nice quality, not as good of quality as some of the other people because they are using actual high quality microphones. And for a while, Mike isn't using the best quality and you could, you know, who cares? But if you're actually listening to it on like uh, over the ear headphones, it's, it, it can be a little bit hard, even not impossible, not history impossible as we'll get to in a second. But the Revolutions podcast is super dope. I would recommend everybody check it out. All of them are my favorite. The Russian Revolution, the French Revolution, they are all good. And the reason that he falls behind some of these other people is that I feel like Mike doesn't have as large of a personality, but that's fine. He is who he is, and I think that he could easily be number one on other people's list. But he is my number five, everybody. So, and like I said, he only has two different podcasts. Like I said, I would recommend all of his work, but especially his revolutions. You could pick, I think there's 11 or 12 different seasons now. If you don't want to go do the whole Rome thing, and let me just say that real fast, that if you are going to do this, if you're going to sit here and do this, start from the start. Start from the start and work your way through if you're doing the history of Rome because you need all the history. Don't st- don't don't skip to the slave wars and Pompey and uh, Sola. Like go through the whole thing and you're going to learn a lot. That's actually with a lot of these podcasts that you should start at the very start. If you want to get into Mike Duncan, start at the start and go to the end. If you want to get into Dan Carlin, start at the first one where you I forget what he goes over. Like if William the Conqueror could beat Julius Caesar, you know, one of those types of questions. Super fun idea. So sex, or sex, second and fourth on the list is um, History Impossible with Alexander von uh, Sternberg. And this podcast is super low-key. The next, other than Mike Duncan and Dan Cullen, the last three are somewhat low-key, but Alexander is the most low-key of all. And I think that he has the most potential. I think he, you know, I have a feeling that Mike's, or not Mike, that Alex Ander is going to become the greatest of all time in history podcasting if he keeps it up. If he keeps it up, I think that he's going to surpass everybody because he's got the quality down. He's got the quantity down. He's got the sound quality down. All, all those boxes are pretty checked. And the episodes come out at a very decent pace, at a monthly pace, which is beautiful. And they're long episodes, at least 90 minutes long. So he has all that checked off, but he's got a younger feel. Him and Daryl Daryl Cooper from Martyr Maid, which will be next, they have this more youthful feel to them than the other people on the list. And they bring a different energy. And I think, I couldn't tell where to put this. I actually might put Alex third. Right now, Alexander third. But the qual- he, Alex is on top of this list. And is in fourth place because he covers the most random topics of all time. Muslim Nazis, rape in the Civil War, the the history of Donald Trump. Let me, let me go over some other ones. I've listened to all of his podcasts and the Muslim Nazis, the pandemic, hindering a hue and cry. I mean, there's so much good, a very British samurai. There's so much good content in here that it's insane. Oh, and we're moving back. Oh, I'm sorry, everybody. But Alexander, and so let's see, the Muslim Nazis. And yeah, I would recommend checking out the Muslim Nazis series and you'll see immediately what I'm talking about, about the quality and the fun. And Alex is Alexander, I don't know what to call him. Alexander is it, doesn't shy away from covering and and having the fun that we need. And I could go deep into all my favorite episodes, but once again, just listen to all the fucking episodes. You guys need to listen to all of his episodes and support this guy. Join his Patreon. All of these people, except maybe Mike Duncan and Dan Carlin, need your help. And all of them, of course, need your help. But Daryl Cooper, Alexander, and Danielle Bolelli, Danielle Bolelli, they need help, man. They, you know, 
Mr. Bellelli has a family and they are out here putting in work and probably are even working day jobs to supply us this information, to give us these cool stories and sift through eight, nine, 10 books a month and then present us something. Support them. You know, it's five bucks a month. You guys spend five bucks a month on random shit. So support these guys. Get at early access, man, to the podcast. That's why I do it because I'm a, I'm a fiend for this stuff. I'll like, especially these top five, I'll, I will pay to get their podcast early because that's how dope it is. Like I, I'm like, I'm like a little girl. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have it. And the other people are, I don't even know anyone that listens. To, I don't know anybody that listens to history podcasts. And I, and I don't even go on forums. Like I'm the only person who impresses. I'm like, yes, I can't wait any longer. I didn't know this was coming out anyway, but now that I know I need to have it. So next is the Martyr Made podcast. And the Martyr Made podcast came in at number three because Daryl's got some personality. Daryl's, I mean, I feel like he's got just a tad more experience than Alexander because he's just been doing it a little bit longer. He moves at a slower pace. But once again, he covers a lot of random things. He actually did a bounce off. I figured out about him because he did a extension episode of History on a History on Fire series on the Spanish conquest of Mexico. So that's how I got into him. And then there's been James Jones, um, Jonestown podcasts that were great. There have been the, the uh, Palestinian Jewish conflict podcasts that were great. There's been many great interviews that he's done. Um, there's a whole list. Let's, let me, let's go check out a couple of his podcasts. And recently he's been doing, um, Yeah, Fear and Loathing in Jerusalem. So good, everybody. Cannibalism. I mean, you guys know that, yeah, a drunken introduction, approaching the Aztecs. That's such a good one, everybody. So I would check out the Martyr Made podcast, everybody. And this is just a quick overview. Maybe at some other point, I'll dive deep into all these different authors. But I just wanted to get into them today and let you guys know so that you guys can go do your own research and get into this because you guys have to get into these guys. I mean, probably should have said this minute one, but this is the next level stuff. This stuff can help you so much. Like why should you listen to history podcasts? Because every single night when I go to bed, I am in the greatest stories of all time. Like right now, we'll talk about what I'm listening to in a bit, but you have access to everything, every story, every culture, Good, bad, you know, like the, the Palestinian and Jewish conflict like we're seeing right here. That's a sad story, man. And I learned a lot. And now when I hear people and I see what's happening on both sides of the Hegelian dialects of the Jews and the, you know, Jewish people and Muslim people, I'm like, bro, you guys don't even know why you, this is so reactionary. Like when you actually know the history and what's going on and Daryl doesn't shy away from like, none of these guys really do either maybe Mike Duncan a little bit from like the conspiracy angle and like going deep and being like, yo, this is this, some of this stuff is rigged. No one, he, no one is scared of that. You know, Dan Carlin is a little bit scared. He's like kind of a moderate, but everyone else is willing to go into iffy territory. And, and that's the cool thing about history too, is like a lot of this shit, bro. If it happened 400 years ago and it's like kind of an unpopular, it wasn't a very unpopular opinion. No one's, no one cares now. Unless you're debating with people who are in those historical circles, no one knows. No one's smart enough to know. And two, no one cares. So like you can you can go with the craziest conspiracy theories in history and have at it and tell people about it and be like, bro, <laughs> this is what the Vatican was doing. And people will be like, oh, really? And they're not going to be like, you're a you're a conspiracy theorist. They're going to be like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Who who knew what was going on back then? It's not going on now. There is, you know, with all the, we have the greatest technolo techn uh, technology of all time, but the government isn't using that to hide anything from us. They've changed. They've changed in the last 20, 15 years since the Patriot Act, everybody. So next on the list, everybody, of course, is the godfather, the podfather of history podcasting, Dan Carlin. And his podcast, Hardcore History, is the best podcast out there. I mean, his Wrath of the Khan series on on the Mongols, Blueprint from Ar Armageddon about World War One. I. Um, I can't remember his Eastern Front World War Two series. His 
Supernova in the East Pacific Theater World War II series, his Celt- uh, R- Roman Republic history, his Persian King history. There is so much deep content in here, and it's hard to put him at number two, but you will see in one second. He has a personality. He goes on tangents. He has the voice. He has the quality. He beats everyone in every single way, but the reason Dan Carlin is number two is he doesn't release, release enough. And he releases quality podcasts, but I feel like Dan has slowed down. He tries to get one out every six months with maybe an ancillary episode in there. And that's that's a good pace, man. But he's only touched so many issues. And everybody else has already touched just as many issues as Dan has. They haven't, haven't gone as deep. But Mike Duncan has, maybe not Mike Duncan, but he has touched just about as much issues. And... With only 18 episodes, the Martyr Made podcast has touched almost, is starting to catch up with Dan Carlin. Um, History Impossible has had a lot of episodes, and they are on, Alexander's on pace to catch up to Dan Carlin. And so that's pretty cool. And Dan Carlin, everybody, I would recommend Blueprint for Armageddon. I'd recommend the Supernova in the East podcast, which is going to conclude hopefully in the next couple months. Um, yeah, let's see what else there is. Blueprint for Armageddon, the Dire Outlook. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in here. The Destroyer of Worlds. Oh my God, about the nuclear bomb. And everyone go check out Dan Carlin's other history podcast, Hard, uh, Hard, Hardcore Addendum, where he interviewed the a nu- uh, I can't remember, a nuclear theorist, not a theorist, um, a historian, a nuclear bomb historian about all that and the decision making going into nuclear bombs and go read that guy's book even though it's a little bit has some political bias and and everyone was pissed about that just fyi everyone gets pissed for like people having a political bias but i'm like bro like have you ever talked to somebody have you ever had like a professor they all will be like fuck trump or fuck obama like they all like everyone like that's common, man, that people get caught up in politics and have an opinion. Of course, they're going to put that in a chapter of their book. Then there's the Celtic Holocaust, Celtic Holocaust talking about Julius Caesar. I mean, there's so much good stuff in here. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, King of Kings. So I would recommend Dan Carlin to everybody. Go check out his work, a dollar podcast. You get all this stuff for like $54 and... I mean, Dan Carlin's, I think, even the only person of, out of all these that you can torrent because I think most of them are free. I think everything's free except maybe some of History on Fire's podcast. So what takes the bacon, though, everybody, yep, Supernova in the East again, is History on Fire. And History on Fire is, in my opinion, the best history podcast. And... I'll give the caveat right now that Daniele has an Italian accent, but it really isn't that bad. I don't know what people are tripping about when they, I don't even know if people say anything, but I've showed it to some friends who are like, yeah, his accent. And I'm like, bro, have you ever met someone from a foreign country? And it's not like it's rough. He sounds perfectly fine. And Daniele has done, I think, 72, 73 episodes now, I, if I'm not mistaken. And he's, the most he's ever done is like three episodes on a topic. Maybe maybe the Aztecs was five, but he's covered at least 40 different topics in my estimation, 30 to 40 different topics. And he has the best personality because Daniele is a martial artist. He is fun. He has done psychedelic drugs. He's experienced pain. He was re- religious. He is Italian. His parents were very smart. He has experienced a lot of grief he has kids he's a normal guy i know people that personally know daniele and he is still small enough that he's a cool guy to them man so shout out for him for doing that man and his quality and his content and his choices are insane there are stories i would have never found i could have been a full-time historian i never would have found out about these stories or had or just sat down and listened to him like right now i'm listening to the john brown story do you know about john brown the slave abolitionist um, that was raiding places in Missouri and like going crazy and freeing slaves before the Civil War. That the people, the, what people say, caught he caused and sparked the Civil War. How about Marcus Aurelius? How about it, a world-renowned author taking over a city in um, what used to be uh, Italian territory after World War II? I mean, there are so many. The the Mexican. Um, 
conquest or the Spanish conquest of the Mexican Empire. I'm sorry, but I'm fumbling over my words. There's so many good episodes. Crazy Horse, Sitting Bull, uh, uh, Iku. Iku was my favorite of all about the the famous Zen poet Iku. Um, I mean, I, there are so many good ones that some. Um, the boxer, what's his name? I forgot his name. I I just can't. The guy that invented judo. Um, I'm, I'm. It's very sad. I'm blanking all these guys' names. But Danielli has done everything, every single war, and that's why I don't. Li- that's why I like him because a lot of these other, a lot of some history podcasters, like Dan Carlin. Dan Carlin will be like, I'm never going to cover the Civil War, but Danielli will just blow through the Civil War in three months with a John Brown story, and I'll get a lot of the story. I'll get. I got through that podcast. I got a very dense prehistory of the what happened before the civil war and some of the tensions that were going on and some of the key figures in the story presidents frederick Douglass, harriet tubman people in the south um future generals like there is was a lot that i learned that was a prehistory within the history and once again a great personality good quality microphone monthly podcast everybody monthly podcast one of the downsides is that he's on luminary which costs $5 a month or $35 a year, which is like, I guess, $3 a month to subscribe to. But I think there's at least 50 episodes for free. So start at episode number one and work your way up. And by the time you can, by the time you get there, what I do is that every couple of months I subscribe and I just go do the backlog and all the ones I, you know, we'll say every three or four months, I'll buy it and I'll listen to them all and then go re-listen to some. But, you know, and just do that. In two or three months, you could listen to the other 20 and you'd be caught up and could take a break. And I think it's worth it. It helps him get paid. And let's look at some photos if there are any. Yeah, his Sitting Bull series is great. Crazy Horse series. People of the Sun. And that's that's his main one. If I would, if I said, you know, you need to listen to one Daniele Bellelli History on Fire podcast, it would be People of the Sun, The Conquest, Conquest of Mexico. And... Cortez's story is crazy and the way that it's told and the amount of detail he gives it five five episodes like 10 hours of content which I think is a good amount and he adds a lot of personal opinions and laughter into the into the into the podcast because it's a wacky story 300 guys show up on ships and they somehow take over Mexico and Montezuma and all that you know, it's actually funny. One of my students was named Montezuma and I was like, you know what that name means? He's like, yeah, well, yeah, I was like I wanted to be like, yo, that's kind of like a cowardly name, man. But I, of course, I'm not going to say that because I'm sure it's, it means a lot of different things in the language. And I think that's what the King Montezuma, right? Maybe I'm blanking on that. But I was like, isn't that the, the Aztec King's name that like sold everybody out? But everybody, these are my favorite history podcasts. And check them out. Let me know if you like them. Let me know if I'm missing anything. Your top five in the comments below. Let me know what you think. I will catch you guys later. Keep listening to history. It is a beautiful experience. Like, um, okay, a couple more slides. Stoicism, Pandemic and War, The Life of Marcus Aurelius. Great series. Just finished that one. Violent Ends and Violent Delights. That's the one I'm I'm on right now, everybody. John Brown. And yeah, John Brown, man. What What a man. So that concludes the presentation, everybody. Thank you guys for being here. Give, give these guys some love, support them, give me some support, subscribe, say what's up, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.